Hi everyone and welcome to my favourite bronzer and blush of 2022. I cannot begin to express to you how excited I am to be filming this video today because you all know that bronzer and blush, they are my thing. Blush especially has the ability to transport any makeup look to that next level and just bring everything together and make it feel and look more cohesive. But I have found it very difficult to coordinate my ultimate favourite, my affordable favourite and my cruelty-free favourite in both blush and bronzer categories. But I have managed it so we're gonna get straight on with it. If you're new here, hi my name's Gemma, I upload new content on YouTube every single week. At the moment we are doing the favourites of 2022 series so if you don't want to miss any more of these videos please make sure you've clicked the like button, the subscribe button and the notification bell. So because you know I love these products so much I have split the bronzer category into favourite cream bronzers and also favourite powder bronzers and because we've got to go the extra mile for blush because it is my favourite product of all time. I have split that down into three categories, cream blush, liquid blush and powder blush. Let's go. Let's kick it off with favourite cream bronzer and my ultimate favourite cream bronzer as well as my cruelty free favourite cream bronzer is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzer in the shade 1 Fair. I also have the shade 2 medium so side by side that is the difference. I do think there's quite a big jump but when it transfers onto the skin you don't see that much of a difference. You see most of the difference in undertone because the shade 1 is more neutral cool and the shade 2 is more neutral warm so if you have a warm undertone I would definitely go for the shade 2 regardless of how fair your skin tone is because this blends out effortlessly. You can really go to town with this and it just blends out into your natural skin. It looks stunning. If you have more of a neutral cool undertone or you want something that looks more like contour or can be doubled up as a contour product as well as a bronzer, the shade 1 Fair is just glorious. Both of the formulas of this are spectacular. It looks gorgeous on the skin, it's not matte, it's skin-like, so it looks very, very fresh and natural. I just adore these, absolutely beautiful. The formula does remind me slightly of the Huda Beauty Tantor, so if you can't stretch to the price of this, which I completely understand, but you do want to check it out, the Huda Beauty Tantor is similar. It's not a dupe, but it is similar. And this is more of a medium price point, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury is more on that luxury end. Okay, so my favourite affordable cream bronzer I have spoken about and used on my channel so many times. I think if I put another product in its place in this category, you would all go, what? What is she doing? So I'm not going to. This is from Revolution and it's the Ultra Cream Bronzer in the shade Light. I also have it in the shade Medium as well. To be fair, the perfect concoction for me is a mixture of the two. As you can see, See, on the left the shade light is slightly more neutral warm and on the left the shade medium is slightly more neutral cool. So if I'm wanting to use this as a contour I use the shade medium but I use it underneath my foundation to lighten it off and soften it off a little bit. Whereas the shade light if my skin is really fair I can use this as a bronzer on its own over the top. Of foundation. I should mix these two together. Sometimes I get a bit overzealous and just go in with the medium on its own and it can look a little bit much and it's more difficult to blend out. This is very, very easy to blend out and looks very similar on the skin to the Charlotte Tilbury product, but it's just short of the blendability of the Charlotte Tilbury product. So this does take me a little bit longer to blend out because it's a slightly wetter formula, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury one is slightly drier and just effortless to dab on and blends out in seconds. By the way, Revolution products are also cruelty-free. So not only is this affordable, but it can also be my cruelty-free option as well. 
bonus. Moving on to my ultimate favourite powder bronzer. I have tried so many powder bronzers this year, I had to revisit them all in order to collate my thoughts. We've tried ones from Tom Ford, Guerlain, Chanel, Patrick Tarr, Charlotte Tilbury, but to name a few. And even though they were all beautiful and I did use them consistently for a while, there is one powder bronzer that I always go back to because it never lets me down, the longevity is excellent and it is the perfect shade for my skin, more neutral cool so it doesn't give me too much warmth and yet it gives me enough, I can use it as a contour as well as a bronzer, it is just utter perfection. That is the powder bronzer from NARS, this is the matte bronzer in the shade Viata and it is just simply perfect for me. As you can see, it is extremely well used. I may actually hit pan on this soon. It has lasted me such a long time. I mean, I'm going on at least a year's use out of this now and I've still not hit pan. It is excellent. This lets the skin shine through, but it is buildable. So if you want that really punchy, sun-kissed look, you can get it from this. But if you want something more subtle, this is also your gal. I, I just adore it. It never steers me wrong and it stays on my skin all day. This is the one that I have on today. I've actually been using a lot more cream bronzers recently and I put this on to film this video today and thought, why have I not been using this? Why has it been stuck in my drawer? I just do not know. So effortless to blend out on the skin and it just looks like my skin but sun-kissed and that's what I want from a bronzer. Moving on to my favourite affordable powder bronzer as well as my favourite cruelty-free powder bronzer. They are one and the same product from Beauty Pie. This is the Awesome Bronze Powder Bronzer in the shade Sunnyside. As you can see, this has more of a pinky tone to it. If I show you this side by side for my ultimate favourite NARS bronzer, they are similar tones, similar depths, but this one is slightly slightly on the pinkier side than the more neutral cool bronzer. It's got more of a pinky edge to it, which is incredibly flattering on my skin, especially in the summer, but I can also get away with this in the winter as well as more of a contour and a bronzer. Instead of this giving me that summer glow look, that bronzy effect, this just gives that warmth from within look. Very, very beautiful and girly because of the pink hue to this. So I absolutely adore this. There is another shade that I have which is slightly deeper and slightly warmer, so I tend to use that in the summertime if I want more warmth showing through, a bit more bronzy edge to it, but this one is just stunning because of that little pinkiness in the undertone. The Beauty Pie bronzer also blends out effortlessly and it also builds beautifully on the skin as well. So if you want that punchier look, you can easily get that with this bronzer as well. Unlike the NARS bronzer, which is more of a matte bronzer, this has more of a luminous edge to it. So it will give you a little bit of a glow, but without the sparkle. Before we move on, I think the last time I wore this top I was actually filming and I don't know if you remember, but I have a vague recollection of some sort of foundation or concealer had a little bit of a splurting incident that went all the way up my top. I think I should have put this in the wash. Just got this out of my wardrobe and noticed. Apologies for the stains, everyone. Let's move on to blush. Making the decision about my ultimate favourite cream blush was not hard. I hardly had to think about it at all. It goes to NARS, this is the Air Matte blush. It has to be in the shade Rush though because this is just divine. Spectacular shade on me, it just makes my eyes sparkle. This gives you that I've just been walking through the fields in the breeze sort of look. It's that inner warmth poking through from within. It's a very natural, flushed look. And it doesn't look like this is going to be natural at all, but seriously it is. Get a little bit on your brush, tap it onto the back of your hand just to get rid of any excess, and then just tap it on the cheek and blend it out. Blends out superbly and just gives you that, oh, look, so nice. I would never have picked anything else. It is beautiful. 
Not only that, but because this is a matte blush, the longevity of this is second to none. This will last on your skin all day. And I mean all day. But the NARS Cream Blush is not affordable or cruelty-free, so my favourite affordable and cruelty-free cream blush goes to e.l.f. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did not like the putty blushes when they first arrived in the UK. Then the luminous putty blushes arrived, and I did not have high hopes whatsoever. Then I was blown away. Absolutely blown away. These are beautiful, beautiful cream blushes. Now, you do have to like a little bit of sparkle because even though the glitter in these is very fine, it is still there. It adds a little bit of shine, a little bit of iridescence, a little bit of glow to the cheek, but you have to like that glowy, luminous look to get on with this blush. Quite obviously it is called a luminous putty blush, so if you don't like that, definitely steer clear of these because it does give you that shine. But it is so youthful and glowy, I cannot get enough of this. It's lovely. So unlike the NARS cream blush, which is matte and definitely non-sticky, this does have the tiniest bit of tackiness on the surface of the skin, but it does sink in really well, so I don't feel like it transfers through the day, but I really like it. Doesn't last as long on my skin as the NARS Air Matte Blush, but it lasts a decent amount of time, and the shade of this in Belize, so nice. So, so nice. Really, really pretty, and again, it's one of those shades that just makes your eyes sparkle. Let's move on to ultimate favourite liquid blush, and once again, there was a hands-down clear winner in this category. This is the blush that I take on holiday with me. This is the blush that I reach for most often in my drawer out of all of my blushes combined. And I have a lot of blushes. This is the one that looks most natural on me. This gives me a glow, but it's not over-the-top glow. It's a very natural glow. It lasts on me all day. It looks girly. It looks natural. It just looks stunning. It's the one that I have on today. You can have it quite subtle, like I have it on today, or this is easily buildable. Believe me, the pigmentation within this blush is punchy. So you do have to be careful when you apply it, but it feels utterly weightless and it's incredibly hydrating. It's from Chanel and this is the Water Fresh Blush in the shade Warm Pink. Now I do have it in Bright Coral as well. I love this, but you can see which one has been used the most in here. <laughs> The one on the left is Warm Pink, the one on the right is Bright Coral. Warm Pink wins every day of the week for me. It is just stunning. Oh, really, really beautiful. But of course, Chanel is not affordable, although I am tempted to go out and buy another couple of shades in these because they are divine. And it's also not cruelty-free, so I do need an affordable cruelty-free favourite, and I definitely have one. These are from Made by Mitchell, and they are his liquid blushes. I have three different shades of these, Melon Sorbet, Peach Sugar, and also Shy Boy. Melon Sugar is definitely my favourite here, but the other two are also beautiful as well. These are a much thicker consistency than the Water Fresh Blush from Chanel. I mean, it's not difficult. These are practically water, and these are much, much creamier in consistency, but equally as easy to blend out on the skin, and also equally as punchy in the pigment. I definitely wouldn't advise putting this directly on the cheek and then trying to blend it out. Pop it on the back of your hand and either apply it to the cheek with your fingertips, a brush, or a sponge. All of those methods of application work really, really well. Once these are blended out, and that is a very easy process, these really do stick to the skin and they do not move all day, so they've got great longevity. Absolutely adore them. If you've not tried them already, they're sort of on the higher end of affordable pricing, but definitely well worth a look. Let's move on to my ultimate favourite powder blush. This has been really difficult to narrow down because I own so many amazing powder blushes in the drawers behind me, both affordable and luxury blushes. So it's been a lengthy process to try them all out again and come up with my ultimate favourite, but I have managed it. It has to go to Gucci. I mean, look at the packaging for one. The packaging did not let me down. 
you do need to like the packaging, you are paying for the packaging, but not just the packaging, the formula and the consistency of the blush is just divine, it is silky smooth, it is like satin on the cheek, it blends out beautifully, it builds up as well, so if you want a punchier look, which I often do, <laughs> you can get it with these as well, they're just stunning, give that lovely satin luminous finish without being too dewy or luminous. It's a subtlety that Gucci definitely gives in spades. I just love them. And even though these are astronomically expensive, I now have three. My bank balance is crying, but I am so stoked by these blushes. My ultimate favourite shade is Tender Apricot in 02. I then have 04 Bright Coral, and uh, one of my subscribers said I would love this shade, and I definitely do. Thank you, Chrissy. This is 05 Rosy Beige. Love them all. Tender Apricot's my favourite. So again, Gucci, definitely not affordable, not cruelty-free, so my favourite affordable and cruelty-free powder blush goes to Milani, and not the one that you think I'm going to go for. So in last year's favourite blushes of 2021, I chose the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Luminoso. I do still love that for evening wear. However, as my skin is getting a little bit more mature and my pores are slightly more prominent on my skin than they were last year, the Luminoso blush is slightly too sparkly for me and really does highlight those large pore areas. And because I don't like to stick to blush just up here, I do like to bring it down the cheek a little bit. I decided to go somewhere else this year. I have been trying so much many affordable blushes out this year and this one really stands out to me. Again, from Milani, like I said, this is one of the rose powder blushes and this one is in the shade 11 Blossom Time Rose. It is gorgeous. Just enough warmth on the cheek. It's more of a corally peachy shade. It is divine. It gives me enough luminous look on the cheek without looking sparkly and I love that. It is so soft and velvety, it glides on, it buffs out effortlessly. You can really build this up on the cheek to make it punchier, again, which I often do, <laughs> as you know, but it's just lovely. If you haven't tried these already, if like me, you went straight for the baked powder blushes, I definitely recommend you try these out because they are lovely. So that is it. That is my favorite bronzers and blushes of 2022 brought to a close. I'm actually quite sad. I really enjoyed filming this video. You know how much I love bronzers and blushes. They just make my heart sing and do a little bit of a happy dance. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know what your favourite bronzers and blushes are in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.